Hey yo, back again. So we are going to get back into Pythagorean theorem, but before we get there, I'm going to show you why we learned square roots of non-perfect squares. Yesterday, all of the work that you did to find the missing leg of a right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem always ended with a perfect square and a perfect square root. In these examples, there will not be a perfect square and a perfect square root. So we'll have to use an estimate. Remember the two acceptable ways that we estimate are finding between which two consecutive integers and to which number it's closest. So we start with the square root of 39. It's not on our perfect squares list, but if it were, it would be somewhere between square root of 36 and square root of 49. Square root of 36 is 6, and square root of 49 is 7. So we could say it's between 6 and 7. But because 39 is closer to 36, it would also be acceptable to say it's about 6. The square root of 66, is it on our list? Of course not. It's not a perfect square. No number times itself equals 66. But it is close to the square root of 64, which is 8. So we could say it's around 8. But it's more than 8. So we could also say it's between 8 and 9. The square root of 7. There is no square root of 7. No number times itself equals 7. So what do we do? We say, where would it be if it were on our list? In this case, it would be somewhere, be 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 somewhere between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Mm -hmm. So it definitely is between 2 and 3. A little closer to 3. So we could say around 3. The square root of 18 coming next, also not on our list, but mm -hmm. it is a little more than the square root of 16 and less than the square root of 25. So we could say it's between 4 and 5, but we could also say it's closer to 4. The square root of 90, the last one on this list right here, not a perfect square. No number times itself equals 90. You can't say what about 9 times 10 because 9 and 10 aren't the same number. So instead, you say, where is it closest to or what is it between? The square root of 90 is between square root of 81 and square root of 100. And so that's 9 and 10. So you could say it's between 9 and 10. You could also say it is a little closer to 9 because 81 is 9 away from 90, while 100 is 10 away from 90. So keep in mind today, you will need your perfect squares and square roots list, but not because you're going to be finding perfect squares and square roots, but because you are going to be working on what numbers they are either in between or closest to. So make sure that you have that handy. So here you see our title screen, Pythagorean Lesson 2. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to find the hypotenuse of a right triangle when it's not a perfect square, like I just told you, but it is worth repeating. So let's do some review first. Let's look at one of the basic Pythagorean triplets, okay, where legs A and B are 3 and 4. You start with the formula, substitute in the numbers, evaluate by doing 3 squared equals 9, 4 squared equals 16, add those, you get 25. If 25 equals c squared, then c must be the square root. And so you just need the square root of 25, which is a perfect square root from a perfect square, and that's 5. Another example, legs a and b being 5 and 12. Start with the formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Substitute in the numbers, 5 and 12. Evaluate 25 and 144, add those together. And then you're just going to say, if 169 equals the square of c, then c must be the square root. And the square root of 169 is on your list, and that's 13. And now to today's problem. ABC construction, same one from yesterday, needs to ex set up an extendable ladder to the correct height for the lower window. Old nasty Miss McCreary says, you can't put the ladder on my grass and you're not allowed to lean it up against the window. So what do they have to do to set the ladder to about the correct height? Keyword there in blue, about. 
they can set the ladder to the exact meter, like for instance, five meters, six meters, seven meters, eight meters, or they could set it to the quarter, the half, or three quarters. For example, they are nine and a half, could be 10 and a quarter, could be four and three quarters, but that's the way their extendable ladder works. It locks into place at only certain points. So the information you're gonna need here is the height of the lower window. You see that's five meters is the length from the ground to the window ledge. You're also going to need the distance from the small cement path to the window ledge. And if we're given that, we should look at those as being legs A and legs B of our potential right triangle. And that's when we're going to think this could be a Pythagorean theorem problem. So the length of the grass from the cement until the window ledge is going to be six meters. And so now we're going to look at how to find the hypotenuse. Now, just by looking at it immediately, we can try to come up with the squares of five and six. That should be pretty easy. But then when we add those two numbers together, we're definitely not gonna get a number that's a perfect square, first of all. Second of all, that number is not gonna be the answer because five squared plus six squared is not gonna equal the length of the hypotenuse. It's gonna equal the length of the square of the hypotenuse. So it's still gonna require us to find the square root, whether it's a perfect square root or not, and then we're going to have to estimate because in this case, the latter can only be set to the quarter, the half, three quarters, or a full meter in order to have it work because it is an adjustable, extendable ladder in which it only locks into places at certain points. Now, in a second, we're gonna take a look at how this works using the formula. So for those of you that are ahead of me already, you've probably figured out that the sum is 61 and that there is no perfect square root of this number. So let's take a look at how that works. So here's the Pythagorean theorem. As always, we are going to start with the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, a was six and b was five, but those are interchangeable. We make the substitution, six squared plus five squared equals c squared. We evaluate six squared is 36, five squared is 25, and c squared doesn't change. We just bring it down. We add 36 and 25, we get 61. 61 equals the square of c. Then c must equal the square root of 61. When we look at our list, we don't see 61 as being on there. Of course not. But the square root of 61 is closest to 8. So the hypotenuse for a right triangle whose legs are 6 and 5 must be around 8. Or you could say the hypotenuse is between 7 and 8, which is another way to look at it because you know that 7 squared is 49 and 8 squared is 64. And together, those are the two closest consecutive whole numbers. Now remember, our specific problem, though, is finding the closest extendable ladder measure that we can use, in which we are allowed to use quarters, half, three quarters, and whole meters. And so where does the square root of 61 fall in that? Well, let's take a look. So looking back at exactly what we started with, our original problem, in which there was a five meters to the window ledge, and there was six meters from the cement path to the side of the building, and then we put the ladder in there. Now, in this case, seven and three quarters is going to be our closest estimate because it's very close, 61 is to 64, but not quite there. Here's another example. We are always gonna start with the formula, the Pythagorean theorem. That's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now remember, which is a and which is b doesn't matter, but they are labeled here so we can use them the way they are labeled. And our first move is then going to be to substitute. We're gonna put a six where the a was and a 10 where the b was. We can then evaluate. 
because we can figure out what 6 squared and 10 squared is. You can get it right off your list. 6 squared is 36, 10 squared is 100. Then the sum of those squares, what is 36 plus 100 but 136, is equal to c squared. Now, if 136 equals c squared, that means that c must be the square root of 136. So how do we find the square root of 136? We start by looking at our square roots list. We notice that it's not on there, but we have a couple of options. We can say it's between two whole numbers or close to. So in this case, we're gonna go with only one of those options. First, what is the square root of 136? Give you a second. It is closest to 12, so we can say it's about 12. Of course, we could also say that it's between 11 and 12 because 121 is the square below 136 and 144 is the square above it. So now let's look at the next problem. Again, we have a and b, and always our first step is gonna to be to start by writing the formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. From there, we can substitute a and b with the numbers that represent sides a and b. Five squared plus nine squared equals c squared. From there, we evaluate. We know what 5 squared is, and we know what 9 squared is. So we get those two answers. From there, we need to find the sum of those squares, simply adding 25 plus 81. 25 plus 81 is 106. And so then again, we say, if 106 equals c squared, or the square of c, then c must be the square root of 106. So we look at our perfect squares list. 106, of course, is not on there. But the first thing we can do is we can find which it's closest to. Now, if you look at the list, you might notice that the square root of 106 is pretty close to the square root of 100. And the square root of 100 is 10. So this means it's about 10, but not exactly 10. Another way of stating it is between which two it is. And since it's more than 10, but less than 11 at 121, we can say it's between 10 and 11. Let's look at another one. First step again, always. That's right. Start with the formula. Write it out. No reason not to. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. From there, you're going to substitute the numbers that represent a and b. In which order, it does not matter, but in this case, they're labeled. 3 squared plus 6 squared. You can now evaluate 3 squared and 6 squared. 3 times 3 is 9. 6 times 6 is 36, so you can get them right off your list. And then your next step is just going to be to add those two numbers together. 9 plus 36 equals 45, and 45 is equal to c squared. So now we get into this exact same situation again. If 45 equals the square of C, that means C must be the square root of 45. So we look back at our squares list. Of course, 45 is not on there, but it is pretty close to one of them. Can you figure out which one? Yes, it's pretty close to 49. And so then what's the square root of 49 would be 7. So that means the square root of 45 has to be about 7, but not 7 itself. And then you can say between which two squares is 7. It's more than 6, but less than 7. So you can say between 6 and 7. Let's do another one. Now in this case... We don't have an A and a B specifically labeled, but because of the commutative property, it doesn't matter which is A and which is B because we're going to add them anyway. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, in which we're going to say A is 11, B is 10. doesn't matter which one of those you put in each place. C is different. And so then you can evaluate. 11 squared is 121 and 10 squared is 100. You then add those squares, and the sum of those squares will get you 221. Now, 221 is equal to c squared. So once again, here we are. We're going to take a look at our perfect squares list and see if we see 221. It's not on there, 
but it is between two numbers and it is very close to one of the numbers. So what is the square root of 221? Well, you probably have found that it is very close to the square root of 225. And the square root of 225 is, wait for it, 15. So the square root of 221 is not 15, but it's about 15. And that's what the squiggly equal sign tells you. And then you can say, well, it's still less than 225, so it must be between 14 and 15, but not exactly either one. So why not do another one? No labels for A and B again, but I'll always start with the formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared. In this case, A and B, which is which, does not matter. As long as you put one in each place, we're going to say A is 1, B is 4. 1 squared is not 2. It's 1 times 1, which is 1. And 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. Now you find the sum of those squares. 1 plus 16 will get you 17. And then if 17 equals C squared, then that means one more time that the answer must be the square root of 17. Now, we look back at our perfect squares list and we say, where is 17? Well, it's not listed on there, but it is pretty close to one of the numbers. The square root of 17 is very close to the square root of 16. Now, you know the square root of 16 is four. But the square root of 17 can't be four, but it's probably pretty close to four. You can try putting it into a calculator. It's going to get you a funky number with a lot of decimals, but it will be about four point and then a bunch of decimals close to four. So it is also considered to be between four and five because it is more than four.